गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन दिस इज अबाउट कॉन्टैक्ट लेंस फिटिंग इन कैरेक्टर कॉर्नर्स वी ऑल हैव हर्ड अबाउट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ कैरेक्टर कॉर्नर्स बट कॉन्टैक्ट लेंस शुड बी द फर्स्ट चॉइस आई से फॉर गिविंग ऑप्टिकल करेक्शन टू सच पेशेंट्स एंड फॉर कॉन्टैक्ट लेंस फिटिंग वी नीड टू नो द डिग्री ऑफ कोनिसिटी विच वी ऑल नो बट द शेप ऑफ कोन विच इज देयर इन कैराटो कॉर्नर्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू फिट अंटैक्ट लेंस so based on the location of a cone either it can be a nipple cone as you can see here which is in the central area which is small and it is usually steeper then oval cone is usually larger it is inferiorly uh, placed as you can see in this uh, topography picture and globus cone involves more than 75% of cornea so these are the three uh, morphological uh, shapes of cornea which we use in uh, fitting uh, contact lenses in keratoconus and this can be the spectacles in the initial stages when we have myopia or we can give contact lenses and surgery as we have heard and we have heard other things also after surgery what happens so spectacle are usually uh, useful only in the initial stages where because with high amount of corneal toricity and refractive error which is changing it is not uh good to have uh, spectacles because the vision would be fluctuating and also sometimes the uh, anisometropia because disparity of keratometry in both eyes uh spectacles may not be useful so contact lens fitting is warranted and challenges for a contact lens practitioner are uh, providing good vision and comfort to the patient and also the whatever lens we prescribe should be a tolerant to the patient and after care visits are also important to know the progression of disease as we have heard fitting of contact lenses whether it is stable or changing and also the ocular changes which can happen with contact lenses a variety of contact lenses are available such as soft contact lens rgb piggyback lens system hybrid lenses and scleral lenses soft contact lenses have limited use and they are useful only in the early stages or when the patient is rigid gas permeable lens intolerant soft toric designs are available in and this can be used in early cases but they are unable to correct astigmatism but if one is using soft toric designs then they need to use stiffer lenses with higher modulus and uh, when the astigmatism increases uh, one has to go to custom toric soft contact lenses which are thicker in the center and thinner in the periphery so that the uh, physiology of the ocular surface is maintained a variety of uh, custom toric soft contact lenses are available and these lenses move more on the eye compared to the regular standard soft contact lenses which we use for myo and as the degree of keratoconus increases one can increase the thickness of the optical zone so that the lens remains stable on the surface this are variety of custom toric soft contact lenses there are many more i could i have not included but at least this will give you an idea when you go through uh, tyler's quarterly which is available though they have discontinued now so that will give you the available lenses in the market Kerasoft IC is one such lens, and it is easy to fit these lenses uh, on eyes with keratoconus. Higher powers and uh, higher cylinders can be corrected with Kerasoft lenses. Optimal lens fit char characteristics with these lenses is similar to the any other soft contact lens. We look for comfort, centration. movement it should be 1 to 2 mm but with these lenses even up to 3 mm movement is acceptable if patient is comfortable and has steady vision however rotation of these lenses should be minimal and the laser mark should be at 6 o'clock position in these lenses rgb contact lenses are the lenses which are preferred here in keratoconus for that matter any type of corneal ectasia and there are three fitting philosophies one is apical clearance as you can see here the lens is not touching the surface uh, as you can see with the fluorescence which is here apical bearing and three point touch where the lens touches at three points on the on the corneal surface so this uh, relationship with the uh, corneal surface is very important and that is assist with fluorescence in apical uh, clearance fit the lens back surface wall apex of the cone as you can see with the fluorescence which is there between the lens and the cornea so uh, the lens is not touching the corneal surface so there is a less risk of scarring but here vision may be variable because of uncorrected corneal astigmatism which will be there here in this case apical bearing this is just to show you this is not an ideal fit one should not give this but then as you can see in the fluorescence pattern you can see that there is no fluorescence here that means the lens is touching or uh, bearing heavily on the apex it will go, um, provide good vision but it will result in corneal insult and contact lens intolerance over use and this can also lead, lead to corneal scarring then three point touch which this is ideal this is a divided support the lens support lens is uh, placed on the corneal surface and the weight is distributed over larger area and this is preferred lens fitting method 
and one achieves stable vision and con with these contact lens fitting. So these are the three patterns what we discussed, three point touch, apical bearing and apical clearance. We should be able to get this point, but it is not the ideal case uh, with the increasing cone in keratoconus. So the contact lens fitting protocol, we need to have a corneal typography or keratometry. We need to know the cone position as discussed, size of cone, myopia, which is there, cylinder, which is there, and the disease progression, because if the disease is progressing, we may have to do collagen cross-linking and then uh, dispense contact lenses. And also we need to see whether the lenses are tolerant uh, and uh, to that patient and the vision with these lenses, because sometimes the patient may have ghosting uh, with the lenses on the eye. So initial trial lens usually is based on the subjective refraction. We use low minus lenses with the early cone and higher minus with severe cone. Uh, we all know that everyone is doing topographies, but though we can do keratometry, but topography is ideal and should be used. Uh, diameter of the lens is dependent on the size of cone, which is there, and the stiffness and position, as I discussed earlier. And initial trial lens selection also in, in, includes peripheral curves and uh, but uh, with whatever lenses we have, probably we can fit the lenses in the eye. And the light tint should be given so that the patient should be able to see the lens. Start with the mean keratometry value, use smaller diameter lenses for smaller and center cones and larger diameter lenses for larger and decentered cones. Optic zone also ranges. Uh, it is different for different types of lenses. This immediate curve and peripheral curves probably we don't have to discuss because we can just see which type of lens we are using and based on that we can change that, but it has to be flatter as the corneal curvature changes towards periphery. We need to know what are the fitting. Dynamic fitting is we see the lens movement on the eye. The lens should be centered, stable, and it should be usually under the upper lid so that the patient is comfortable. The lid doesn't, uh, the edge and lid do not have interaction with each other. However, with tight fitting, there would be excessive central clearance as we saw. Heavy mid peripheral contact zone would be there and there would be a decreased edge clearance. And these patients, if they have lenses with tight fitting, they will have three and nine o'clock staining of the corneal surface. So we'll have to change this because it will cause uh, corneal surface changes and patient won't be comfortable and will be drop out. Uh, loose fitting, as the name suggests, the lens would be loose on the eye. It may get decentered, vision would be less here and uh, the lenses are unstable on the surface. So these lenses also should be changed. An ideal fitting is a lens uh, which is centered one, even on movements, has average speed of one to two millimeter on the surface. All these RGPs, uh, soft lenses should move on the eye. The vision should be stable and preferably this should be under the lead fit. And there should be minimal central clearance, light mid peripheral contact zone should be there and optimal edge width, as you can see here, with uh, good edge clearance. So advanced keratoconus, we can fit with steeper and smaller lenses. Base curve, we should start with mean K values. Begin with uh, base curve that produces apical clearance, and then we can use point one step so that we achieve our ideal fit. Fluorescent pattern is very important, and we should do that. Usually, we do central uh, assess the central fitting first, and then go to the periphery. So that is how the fittings are done for this. Uh, if we are not able to fit the uh, standard regular RGB lenses, then the other lenses which are available are rose scale lens, aspheric, and larger diameter lenses like diana intralimbal lenses. Rose scale lenses uh, have six curves, curves on the back surface, so it is easy for these lenses to be there on the surface. As you can see here, this is a regular RGP and this is a rose scale lens on the surface where you can see that there is a uniform fluorescein pattern which is known as feathered touch on the uh, of fluorescein on the surface. So this is a very pretty ideal relationship compared to this where you can see that there is a heavy bearing on the lens, on the cornea. So it can correct all astigmatism. These are excellent for eye health and they reduce the chair time. And uh, in one of the studies, 78% of patients said they would prefer rose K. So that is usually a standard practice in our setup also for rose K lenses. Uh, but with higher powers, there are abrasions. So with rose K2 trial sets, we could uh, minimize these abrasions. And now we have advanced fitting options with uh, flexible peripheral fit in these lenses. Coming to piggyback lens system, these are indicated when we are able to get a good fitting of RGP, but patient is not uh, tolerant to the RGP lens, then a soft contact lens is placed on the cornea and then over that an RGP lens is placed. These are also used when there is a poor stability or lens just pops out, chronic recurrent abrasions of the surface, drying of the cornea and patients who have apical scarring to minimize the contact of the RGP with the piggyback lens system. 
uh, these lenses actually are very difficult to handle because we need to have two uh, handling system, two solutions and everything. And there is a high risk of hypoxia with two lenses on the ocular surface. Hybrid lenses are uh, synergized, which are used. They have a central RGP part and there is a skirt of soft contact lenses. Actually with these lenses, there is a corneal edema, which is reported. And these lenses after some period, say in a month's time, get tighter on the surface. So we still need to work on these lenses. And the other problem with these lenses is uh, get uh, these lenses get torn at the junction of RGP and soft contact lens part. Uh, these are similar to like say scleral lens where the lens uh, there is a cl corneal clearance with the corneal surface mm, with uh, hybrid lenses. But we we still have to work on this so that we can get because we had an uh, scleral contact lenses available with us, so we were doing more of scleral lenses compared to hybrid lenses. So these are the lenses which rest on sclera, as you can see here, arch over cornea, they do not touch the corneal surface. So there is a cornea clearance here. These are larger diameter compared to a standard RGP, as you can see in this photograph. These lenses are indicated when all other modalities fail, such as for patients having advanced keratoconus, when the piggyback contact lens system fails, or there is a poor comfort with traditional RGP or rose scale lenses. And if you have given hybrid lens and there is a neovascularization, these scleral contact lenses are advised. This vault, which is the, the corneal clearance with the, I will say uh, with the pros lens, what we are using a Boston side scleral, it's independent of the corneal curvature. We can just change this uh, by changing, using the, uh, uh, this by changing this junction. And the fitting of these lenses is precisely predictable. We can use the front surface asphericity uh, changes in this. And by changing this, we can improve the vision and reduce the aberrations with these lenses. Uh, pros lens use of spline technology. These are lathe cut lenses, as you can see this. And these are computerized ones. We do have a setup here at our, uh, in the Institute. A variety of uh, scleral lenses are available. So uh, Bob Reese has given a classification and I, we use the same corneal, uh, that based on the bearing, we divide them into corneal scleral when the bearing is more on cornea, semi-scleral when the bearing is both there on uh, cornea as well as sclera. And then mini scleral lenses, which are small diameter lenses and uh, uh, true scleral lenses, which are larger diameter lenses. Nowadays, even 3D printed scleral contact lenses are available. So one can have these lenses by sending the topography and seeing the fitting after uh, they get the lenses. The other situations where we can use uh, contact lenses are keratoconus with associated uh, conditions such as vernal keratoconjunctivitis, where there was a heel light drops patient had uh, VKC and we had fitted this child. Especially these are patients who are children and we can one can fit these lenses and the children are more comfortable, they can have better vision. Similarly, for patients having uh, Steven Johnson sy syndrome with keratoconus. Uh, aberrations can be reduced with scleral contact lenses. So as uh, patients of post lasik ectasia and uh, kera keratoconus uh, with the scleral contact lenses, one can reduce the aberrations and improve the vision to near normal in such patients. After uh, intracorneal rings, these are kera rings which are there on the surface. The patient had, uh, I will say, uh, uh, symptoms and we had fit, uh, and was unable to see with this this uh, these this side. So we had fitted him with the scleral contact lenses and his vision improved. Initially, he did have a ghosting of images. So from with 2020 vision. So when we reduced his vision, changed the asphericity, his ghosting also reduced and he improved. Uh, his vision improved and he was comfortable. So there are advantages with scleral contact lenses. We can use those in advanced cases. As his re lens rests on sclera, there is no opacal scarring or it is reduced. This gives better comfort as they are not touching the cornea, stable on the surface as they don't move the eye. And this can delay uh, the need for keratoplasty. And that has been proven by many articles uh, in the literature. This is one such case of ours where uh, we could uh, fit a lady with a uh, scleral contact lens. She, she had healed high drops and she had other high, uh, had undergone keratoplasty use that eye for a pretty uh, 10 years or more so. And then she developed a failed graft in the other eye. So uh, with this eye, she was, she was very reluctant to undergo surgery and we fitted her with contact lens and her vision improved to 20-40 in this eye. So for such patients, we can give them uh, scleral contact lenses and vision can improve. And this is one patient where we had done uh, scleral contact lens fitting and the, uh, after collagen cross-linking. And uh, the fitting actually in uh, we, what we have done and published is that uh, we couldn't use the same lenses. Only thing was the type of fitting may change from say, initially if the, there is a pica clearance, it may go to three point touch or it can go other way around because of change in the shape of the cone and the strengthening which happens with uh, collagen cross-linking. 
So contact lenses should be first line of management and uh, only one uh, out of five under, um, uh, undergoes keratoplasty at our center. Literature says one in four. So there, there definitely contact lenses do improve uh, uh, vision and delay keratoplasty. So with RGP fitting, as I said, we need to see dynamic and static fitting and dynamic should be preferably under the lead fit or interpalpable, adequately centered. Movement should be one millimeter or so. And this lens should not cross the limbus uh, whenever patient moves his eye in all gazes and patient should always be comfortable. Also with dynamic fitting, we have to do a static pattern because sometimes you may feel that lens fitting is good with, on dynamic, but lens relationship with the cornea may not be good. So always uh, do uh, fluorescein staining, bring the lens in the pupillary area and do the staining. For scleral lenses, we need to assess comfort of the patient and then vault for, for presence of air bubble debris and the amount of vault because the vault can reduce uh, after a certain time. And this happened actually more so with keratoconus patients. So we have to assess the fitting after eight, four to eight uh, six hours of lens wear in the eye. Whether that's a mini scleral or scleral, one should do the fitting after a few hours. Haptic or the scleral portion of the lens should, should we look for blanching of conjunctival blood vessels or crowding of conjunctiva that indicates that we need to flatten the haptic. Optic, no, not much is needed. Limbal area, we have to see that it is not being pressed and there is no peripheral limbal corneal edema as such. And AJ should be opposed. They should not be lifted. Otherwise, there would be a debris collection and uh, patient's vision may not be good. Or if the lens is just digging in the conjunctiva, then also patient may have symptoms. So edges also should be looked for. So these are the various contact lenses which are available. And uh, except I will say so hybrid lenses still we have to work on. Scleral lenses now there is a difference for scleral lenses, but first lens always should be RGP and then only the other lenses should be looked into. Thank you very much.